How's it going, everyone? ND Sean 45 coming at you. Now, I had actually planned on making this video last Wednesday, but surprisingly, all of last week, it was a ridiculous and unbelievably busy week for me. So, unfortunately, I'm just now getting around to making this video. But as you guys can tell from the title, uh, this is not Notre Dame football related, something completely different and something that I just really felt that I had to offer my my take on and my opinions. But um, all of us football fans, unless you've been living under a rock, we all know about the the recent domestic abuse charges and whatnot that's going on in the, in the NFL with guys like Ray Rice, uh, Jonathan Dwyer, I forget his first name, but that McDonald from the 49ers, and this is not really domestic domestic abuse, but uh, there's the case of Adrian Peterson uh, kind of overdoing it with disciplining his son. But I'll cover that a little bit later on in this video. But the main topic that I just want to talk about right now, just diving right in, when it comes to domestic violence in general, um, whether it be done by athletes, celebrities, or just ordinary everyday guys, there is no excuse for it. That is one of the most despicable acts you could ever do. There is no reason ever for a man to put his hands on a woman like that. That's just disgraceful, despicable, inexcusable. Um, you know, myself personally, I can't really speak from experience because I've never really had to deal with a situation like that. I mean, you know, of course, my you know my parents uh, they divorced when I was fairly young, but it was a civil divorce. Uh, there was no domestic violence involved. My dad was not beating up on my mom or anything like that. Um, but, you know, it's just with how I was brought up, you know, I was always brought up to treat a lady with respect. And, you know, even though I've never had to experience it, I mean, these, when it comes to women, I mean, these are our mothers who gave birth to us. These are our sisters. Um, uh, I, I had all brothers, but still, um, you know, these are our cousins, our grandmothers, um, people that we work with, our friends, you name it. It goes on and on. Um, you know, I'm kind of at a loss for words because I'm really not sure what to exactly say. Um, but it's just inexcusable. I mean, I mean, unless, of course, you know, a woman is running at you with, uh, with a knife or a gun and trying to kill you, and it's le uh, legitimately a life or death situation, then yeah, that's the only time I would ever put my hands on a woman. Because, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm not going to let someone kill me, of course, but that stuff is just common sense right there. Um, but other, other than that, there's no excuse ever for a man to beat the crap out of his wife or his girlfriend, whoever. It's inexcusable and just deplorable. Um, now, of course, like every like the rest of you, I've seen that video. Not pretty. We're referring to Ray Rice. Um, but one thing I do have to say, just to, to be fair here, um, and I know some of you who see this will probably uh, get the wrong idea, which I'm kind of used to at this point from doing videos here on YouTube. But I am not, I repeat, not making any any excuses for what Ray Rice or Jonathan Dwyer did. And that McDonald guy as well. Um, but uh, in the Ray Rice video, there was a small clip where his his then fiance, now his wife, put her hands on him. And I say the same thing in regards to women as well. The both the husband and the wife, or or a boyfriend and girlfriend, whatever. Um, neither one of them should be putting their hands on each other. You know, the girl the the girl should not be putting her hands on the guy, and the guy should certainly not be putting his hands on her. There's no excuse for it. And really, what, what does it solve? What does it solve, really? Absolutely nothing. It only makes things worse. I mean, that, that stuff is just self-explanatory right there. But look, this video is not to badmouth guys like Ray Rice, Jonathan Dwyer, that McDonald guy, and or Adrian Peterson. You know, I've made it very clear to you guys in the past that I am a strong Christian man. I am all about my faith. And if that scares you away, you know, so be it. I don't care. Um, I'm not afraid to say that. Um, but I'm all, I'm all about forgiveness. And maybe maybe I'm not the best example of it because I haven't always exactly shown it myself from you know videos that I've done in the past and issues that I've had, that I've had on here. But I am a very forgiving guy. And you know, 
with Ray Rice, Jonathan Dwyer, and even guys who aren't celebrities, guys who are everyday, regular people who happen to be doing this, I want all of them to become better men. I want them to learn from their mistakes and never make it again. You know, we human beings, we are, we are not flawless creatures. We are as flawed as it gets. You know, we all make mistakes, and as despicable as these acts were, I want all of these guys, I really do, I want them to become better men, better human beings, and be the, the leaders that they're supposed to be in the community, and be the example setters and that kind of thing. But look, um, you know, the main topic of, of this video is just to talk about how Roger Goodell and the NFL have handle these situations. Now, my honest opinion, I think uh, Roger Goodell has done a pretty lousy job at handling it. Um, you know, just uh, by everything that I've read and have seen on ESPN, which we all know that the media can be flawed, <laughs> very much so, um, but just looking at all the evidence and whatnot, I'm not saying that he's not telling any bit of truth at all, but I think there's a lot that he's not telling us. Um, you know, he said just a couple weeks ago that it was on a Tuesday that that was the first time he had seen the video. Uh, and he could very well be telling the truth on that. He could. But think well, uh, some things that I think, um, I actually think that he did know that the NFL had that video in their possession and he just didn't do anything about it. That's my opinion. I could be dead wrong and I want to be wrong. I hope, I really hope that, you know, Roger Goodell and all these other guys, I hope they're telling us the truth. But, you know, I, I can't say that definitively at this point. Um, you know, he says that he that, that, that video was not in, in the NFL's possession. But then you got another source coming out and saying, oh, well, I sent that video to the NFL uh, back in April. And I have a phone, a phone message to prove it. So it's kind of hard what to believe in anymore in these days. But we all know that the media is the media. Is the media. They are going to paint a picture of what they want you to see. But um, so... Yeah, with the way that Roger Goodell has handled this, I mean, I'm sure there's some bits of truth in there, but I think there's plenty that he's not telling us either. So I can't say that he's uh, done a good job with this at all. I mean, he's handled it very poorly. Um, you know, that's uh, when it comes to domestic violence, that's something you need to nip in the butt right away and address. That, hey, we're not going to stand for this. And he didn't exactly do that, uh, in my opinion. But like I said, I can't say anything definitive for sure. Um, but uh, all I know is the whole situation sounds pretty fishy to me. Um, like I said, the basis of my thing here is I think they did know the video was in their possession. He possibly hadn't seen him seen it himself yet, but I think he did know that that video of the elevator incident was uh, in NFL's the NFL's possession a lot earlier than what he said it was. But one thing you know I do have to give Roger Goodell credit for is he did at least acknowledge not too long ago, just a couple days ago, that hey. I screwed up. I made a mistake. This I didn't treat this as high a priority as I could have made it. That's going to change. So I commend him for that. I really do. But at the same time, you can't help but wonder how much of it is actually damage control and how much of it is sincerity. I mean, you know, when uh, sponsors start to, you know, b uh, back out and others are threatening to, you know, that uh, that makes you address things a lot quicker. So I mean. Uh, you see where I'm going with this? It ma it makes you wonder how much of it is sincerity. But you know, though I guess the 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 most important thing here is you know addressing these problems and you know setting the standard that this kind of these kind of actions are inexcusable and they shouldn't happen. They should not happen. It's there's no excuse for them to happen. Um, so tell me what you guys think. I want to hear your opinions. Th these are my opinions. Um, I want to hear yours. So. Hit hit the comment section below. Let me know what you think. And let's see if we can't make a nice little discussion out of this. Uh, you know. So, yeah. Uh, oh, also, I told you guys I was going to talk a little bit about Adrian Peterson. Um, you know, let me just say this. Um, there is a big difference between spanking and child abuse. Now, myself, you know, I'm not a dad yet, um, but I'm all for spanking. Um you know, I got spanked a few times when I was a kid. Was I abused? Absolutely not. Okay, my parents, they made it very clear to me from from day one, you know, when I you know, was able to talk and understand, they wanted me to, to grow up to be a respectful young man. They wanted me respecting and obeying my elders. 
And you know what? Uh, there were plenty of times where I acted up. My dad took a cherry switch right to my butt. Uh, I remember one time in particular, I was four, thought it would be a good idea to punch him in the stomach because he told me, no, you, it's almost bedtime, you can't get a board game out. Punched him in the stomach, guess what? He chased me down and gave me a cherry switch to my hind end about seven or eight times. But you know what? <clears throat> Excuse me. I asked for every bit of that switching. Uh, did he, like I said, did he abuse me? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And you know, my, both my mom and my dad, I thank them very much for doing the things that they did for me and, uh, you know, keeping me in line. And it's made me the man that I, that I am today. And I, I thank them for it. I'm very grateful to the both of them. Um, but, uh, you know, in this case with Adrian Peterson, I think he did go too far. Um, you know, when it's getting to the point where you're leaving welts and stuff on your kid and, you know, I'm all for spanking. I can't make that clear enough, but you have to know when too far is too far. And I think that's where he really screwed up. Do I think he's a child abuser? Honestly, no, I don't. Um, you know, he has made the the attempts to seek out counseling, learn from his mistakes. And this is just a, a father who made a mistake and went too far. I'm not excusing it. And if, you know, I, I hope I want the the law to play itself out, to the, the system to work. And, you know, Adrian Peterson, I, I just hope, uh, you know, he really does learn from his mistakes and becomes a better father to his kids. Um, but you, still, though, you got to know when too far is too far. Again, can't say it enough. I'm all for spanking. Kids, a lot of kids need it, especially when you look at uh, a lot of kids in this current generation and the younger ones coming up. I don't think they get spanked enough, but you don't abuse your kids. Um, so that's really all I have to say about Adrian Peterson. But, um, um yeah, um, and also, uh, just to let you know, I'm going to be posting this video on Facebook as well, and um, I actually had a, a relative of mine kind of call me out about this, and dude, if you're watching, um, I don't know if you, I don't know if that was your intentions to call me out, but, you know, if you felt that I uh, was uh, ignoring the uh, this issue, I apologize if you felt that way, but I really was not trying to ignore it. Um, I just... Uh, I know I'm outspoken about a lot of other things, and if, if that if that bothers you, then you know you're right to feel bothered by it. But uh, I don't know what to tell you. Um, but I certainly was not ignoring this issue. Um, there just is not enough hours in the day to post everything on social media, whether it be Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, whatever. Because believe it or not, guys, um, and I say this to uh, my everyone on Facebook as well as you guys here on Fa on YouTube my audience I'm not on I'm not online all the time I'm really actually not online as much as you think I am um, you know I have a social life I have a job I have uh, you know other obligations outside of here so they're just I can't afford to be on social media all the time um, you know some things I miss um, some things I'm very outspoken about and I probably do focus more on other topics like you know talking about religious liberty and what I think of things that uh, have gone down with, with stuff like that and the whole marriage issue. I'm very adamant about traditional marriage, and I will continue to speak up on those things. And just, you know, telling in particular my Facebook audience right now, or my Facebook audience, my Facebook friends, hey, um, I'm not sorry for things that I've said in the past about issues like marriage and posting about my religious beliefs and all that. I'm not sorry for it. And, uh, you know, just so everyone hears this, uh, so we can avoid other problems later, which some people don't seem to get. If you have a problem with anything I post, then don't read the post. Okay? It's the last time I'm going to say it. If you don't like it, don't read it. I don't know how to make that any more clear. So, with that said, guys, um, this is Indy Sean 45 signing off. I will try to have the preview for the Syracuse game out either this Wednesday or Thursday. So be on the lookout for it. So as always, with this is Indy Sean 45 signing off. Go Irish, baby.